Now your PC gaming show hosts. You want to turn off your phone? <laughs> I'm turn my phone off. It's, it's not even. It's starting. Hey! Good morning. Good Hello! morning. Uh, yes, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the PC hey, gaming hey, show. Yeah. Yes. We're so happy you're here today. We have a great show for you lined up. We got 30 games yeah. that we're going to be showing off. That's Some fine. Got to test this out anyways. Make sure that everything existing works. Existing franchises and titles. Others will be exclusive world first looks. Y'all ready? Are we speaking through well, this? First yeah, I hope so. Are we speaking through something else? Well, I mean, it can pick so you up. Bad. It can pick you up. Not you usually here, so thank prefer you so much. me to... Thanks no, I to prefer you your brother to be close. 10 a.m. in Los Angeles. Happy Monday, everyone. Best day of the week. Hello to all of you up in the balcony. And of course, thanks to you tuning in live from all over the internet, YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, Facebook, wherever you're tuning in from, welcome. Ooh, We're happy to have you. People do it on Facebook. Nine. I'm one of your hosts for this event. Wait, what? Joining people me do this is on the Facebook? fantastic Frankie Ward. Hello. No, I wasn't oh, talking about that. I was going to talk about the dress now, attire. For you guys I'm all home, for a suit time, whatever platform you're watching, tie, but we are going to be colors are important. Comment. Just, just remember that I said what? clever <laughs> comment. From Twitch, Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook throughout the show, making the you famous for on the internet, on the screen. We're going to be sharing them live. Spokes and one of the things we're especially looking for are your questions for the Borderlands 3 team. For Sean, you've got a mission to put their questions to, give them to their the attire. That's right. Midway Listen, through this show, I'm going to be asking those questions to the creative director of Borderlands 3. Use hashtag it's... PC Gaming Show, and we'll okay. read them live. Until then, let's start the PC Gaming Show with our very first title from UK developer Rebellion. Several years ago, they announced they fun. were working on the follow-up to Evil Genius, a real-time evil layer simulator. And now, real -time Rebellion like is ready to real -time reveal Warframe the very type? vision for the project. So, like, PC Gaming Show, like it's happening who's ready to stroke a cat now? <laughs> menacingly? Here is, is this? the world is free yeah. to reveal for Evil Genius 2 World Domination. Nice background, I guess, like a little entrance screen. Yeah. So, this is on PC, correct? Right? Yeah, these are gonna be on PC. Are there, is there any potential for Oh yeah, always. Platform? Always, always, always. But I mean, it's like if Microsoft had a conference, mm -hmm. are you expecting the Dragon Ball Z game to only be on Microsoft console? No. But you saw the commercial there, though, right? Yeah. All right then. Now this might still be an exclusive, because it's a PC game, but yeah. not everything they show is going to be an exclusive. It's just going to be like, you get your premieres, you get your world exclusives, and you get your like... This is the world exclusive, correct? Yeah, so this one will probably be an exclusive. Who knows how long, but it will be. Gold bars. <laughs> that is. <laughs> yeah, I've never I, even heard of that game. Yeah, I was gonna say I, I know nothing. It's about interesting the as an idea. Yeah, I've never heard of it. It's interesting as an idea. And with me to talk about it, I have Brian Mitsoda and Kara Elephant in Heartbeat Lab. Now, Brian, he's a, a big individual. So is he, though? They could be short. Brian, I mean, he could just be normal height. Um, it means that uh, a lot of people I feel have, like he's uh, a big individual. <laughs> All right. <laughs> hey! Is that where we're going to next? I do know about this. What? The bloodlines? bloodlines? Yeah, 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 yeah. Awesome. So this is not exclusive to PlayStation or PC, so... Just forward to be cross platform. I mean, their games. Guess I have to be the They'll one more than likely come to the system. You're dead. Yep. <laughs> so it's a vampire game. You're obviously new to this whole existence, but truth is, most of you types won't even make it a whole year. We have one rule. 
You don't break the masquerade. Yeah, don't do that. Scraps here. Welcome to the first day of the rest of your death. Having fun yet? Hey, I'll play that. Guys, what does it mean to be a vampire in this world? Uh, so in uh, the Emperor, the uh, what, what it is, it's, it's kind of a darker version of our world, and the vampires kind of uh, need to keep their presence secret from humanity. So the vampires are kind of uh, staying hidden in the shadows while also needing to feed on human beings and kind of manipulating us uh, in order to get blood. We're talking about feeding on human beings. I'm getting flashbacks to last year's show. Kara, it's not just a case, though, of... of I hope that's not how that's going to be. Okay, I was like, is it only going to be people playing as Ventrue? Right, so we have the uh, resonance system, which means that essentially vampires uh, can kind of, like, like uh, see the emotional resonance. Ventrue, these are, like, uh, factions there's within the different clans within the vampires. Yeah. And then they can, they're all uh, vampires, basically. Most of them are vampires. Like, I mean, they're all subgroups of vampires. We can feel more kind of alive. And that can give you like extra boost. I could go into a lot of detail <laughs> about it, but why? I don't know. We could just watch the stuff. We can talk about it later. Like it's it's actually pretty interesting. The first game was um interesting. Which is amazing that we're getting a sequel because that game did not do well. Really? It was an amazing game, but it had so many bugs and problems that people just. You don't just get bitten. There's a patch now which fixes all of it, but back in the day there was no patch. Gotcha. And to be honest, I think you could make And you can clearly tell where they ran out of money. But <laughs> you actually have to adjust for your People loved it because it's That's right. really so cool. Essentially in the Where'd game, the other guy go? Um, when you were made as a vampire I mean, uh, sort of a Somewhere. very young vampire, a lot of other vampires are made at the same time. Um in this thing called the mass embrace. And that means that um essentially uh they're having a less lucky time than you in the world. You're having a relatively good time compared to them because they don't know what they're doing. They're going through vampire puberty uh, on their own, and you know vampire you might have a family, puberty. you might have, say, uh, a yeah. wife and children, and you are morally objecting to drinking blood uh, to survive. And so you might have a less good time, let's say, than the player is having. So you can find them throughout the world as well. And Brian, the first game came out in 2004. You've mm -hmm. been waiting 15 <laughs> years for this. Any pressure? Uh, yeah. Tons of pressure, <laughs> but uh, yeah, we're 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 gonna make it work. Well, you know, you got a good publisher around the world watching this, and of course the audience here, and they all can't wait to play this game. Can you wait, guys? <laughs> so I think you've convinced everyone here. Now, when are we gonna be able to play the game? Uh, we're going uh, Q1 uh, next year. Fantastic. When can we learn more? So January, February, or March. Thank you so much, Brian and Cara. Good luck. Give it up. Guys. Okay, so you have to actually go to their website. You don't go to now, like Steam or anything. No, it's a um, exclusive right now on Epic Store. Star Mancer is okay. a space station sim from Omanux Games and Chucklefish. After hey, I love Chucklefish. Humanity has launched a desperate no attempt to find is. They make um stars. like uh, I want to say Stardew Valley and also uh, space and sim game like pixel art stories. style. They make good games. They make good games. It's good games. Let's take a look at the brand new gameplay for Starmancer. Okay. Starmancer? <laughs> <laughs> Their logo's great. I like this actual, um, what would it be, perspective. Because all the other ones they've made have been 2D. Oh, yeah? Yeah, so it's been like you have left, right, up, down. This is like an actual isometric, so 
like a Diablo kind of style yeah. look to it. Where you're just kind of looking above. You're looking above at an angle, which lets you see the whole space. And moving portraits, too. That's different. They're being invaded. So you build your actual... And then they come into it. Huh. Oh, man. So is this another loop type? Our next no. Guests I doubt both it. Both started as modders. And now, they each independently run their own studio. Let's welcome to the stage from Tripwire, John Gibson, and from Torn Banner, Steve Piggott. Hey, Sean. Now I understand. Both of you started as modders, working independently, and running your own studios. What, talk to me about the collaboration that you started together. Yeah, Steve, so uh, we've known the Torn Banner guys for a long time, uh, even giving them some advice when they were modders, going commercial, helping them not make the mistakes that we made. <laughs> and uh, we've been friends, and we've always wanted to work together. And now we've sort of formed this independent, former mod team, professional super group to <laughs> get an awesome game out to fans. Yeah, and for us, this is a dream partnership as well. Um, we've always been really close with Tripwire, and we really respect their games. Um, we see them as one of the few studios that's bringing true innovation to the FPS genre, and that's what we're all about as well. So let's take a look at this upcoming collaboration between Torn Banner and Tripwire. Is this the, um... So you said this was Chivalry 2? Yes. Okay. This is Chivalry 2. Never played Chivalry, but I a lot of people seem to like it quite a bit. This well, was interesting. I've never, I've never played any of the... Any of these games sequels, <laughs> so there's I have prequels? no knowledge. Prequels. Prequels would be before this one. Yeah, so. sorry. Yeah. Prequels. Ah! Uh, uh, that's that's rough. He's still alive. That man didn't have any arms. He's alive still. He didn't have arms. It's his but a flesh wound. It's about bringing players into their favorite. It's a reference. <laughs> Monty Python. <laughs> I'm just players, saying, if that man was already looped, he had already lost castles, both his arms, I'm gonna leave him there. Villages, and, uh, and, yeah, you're really, you're not just going and standing in an area and then a bar fills up. You're, like you said, burning houses, killing peasants, you know, yeah. <laughs> that sounds a bit much. Playing as peasants, getting man killed. Arms, it's really about archer, letting the player experience every 100% for the, for the night. night. And on top of that, we've, we've this time well, around, we've we're getting a little bit of... No one's going to go with an archer if you... Okay, there we go. People aren't going to go for archer if it's like, hey, man, and swords and cut you. Exactly. I didn't see an archer kill nobody, but I would like to be an archer. I'll be an archer, because I don't want to be close to all that nonsense. I'll be out of the way. Battle of the Bastards. Vanguard. What would be the Vanguard? Don't worry, we'll ignore the last season. Just Battle of the Bastards is going to be in the game. Yeah. And the Arthur, Vanguard is just like a about the sword bigger knight. To chivalry too. I mean, I like know knights have sword really and shield. Element. Vanguards yeah. are like, let yeah, me get my broadsword and just like legit. Just really hammer you in. Here. Yeah, basically. <laughs> Cut let you me just hit two. you with the blunt <laughs> part of my blade. Combat, movement, and animation systems. So that every swing, every every action of the combat feels readable and fair. And also has the satisfaction of the, and the weight that you would expect when two medieval knights in full armor are clashing. Yeah, and it's, uh, it's very, very fluid. readable and, and fair. I don't know if I... Game. And it's 
Like, you know, what do you mean? Well, he said he wants all the actions really to feel like readable yeah, and fair. That makes sense, though. I mean, you want people to know that, okay, he's going for a swing, okay, he's going for a block. Whereas if it's, like, really janky, someone can be like, huh? Get you. And you're like, oh. Yeah, we kind of think of it Leg sweep. <laughs> Leg sweep. I didn't see that coming. Yeah. Now I'm dead. Now you're about to die. This time around has been making it so that players can fight multiple opponents at the same time. Like one on three, one on four situation. Exactly, because that's fundamentally part of the, the becoming the ultimate warrior fantasy right. and uh, achieving glory on the battlefield. Well, I mean, I do have to ask, you're talking about sword oh, play man, and mastery, tough, but man. <laughs> original chivalry, I mean, it's kind of like silly fun. Like, how do you balance the mastery with the fun element? Yeah, our goal has always been to make it so that players can take the game as seriously as they want to and also as silly as they want to. Um, we know that probably about half our audience plays the game drunk, uh, and we love that. Um, yeah, at, at, at least half. Yeah, <laughs> that's an important metric to track. And the game has a huge influence from Monty Python as well. I mean, in the over-the-top voiceovers and the role-playing opportunities. See? I mean, the game is Monty genuinely Python. hilarious. People like As Monty an example, Python. you can uh, feed a man with a chicken while quoting Shakespeare. I don't, I don't, like, so, like, picking up a chicken is a yeah, physical I don't know what you're talking yeah. about. <laughs> well, I mean, I have to ask. When can people get their hands on Chivalry 2? So Chivalry 2 is coming out uh, early 2020. Hey. And it's coming uh, first to the Epic Games Store. Oh. So we look forward to checking it out. Early <laughs> yeah. oh. Gentlemen, John Gibson and Steve <sighs> Piggott with Chivalry 2. Thank you so much. We are just getting started here at the PC Gaming Show. Let's take a look at what's coming up next. You're watching the PC Gaming Show. Epic Games. Coming up. Build a world for wildlife in Planet Zoo. From the creators of Darksiders, Remnant from the Ashes, hmm. Baldur's huh. Gate 3, oh, yeah. and more trailers, interviews, and gameplay footage. I still can't believe Baldur's Gate 3 is only for the Stadia. What Gate 3? Baldur's Gate. It's a D&D game. Dungeons and Dragons. There you go. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Holy crap, man. Uh, Are you serious? You really? Come on. Ugh, man. Is this another trailer? I hope so. Otherwise, I'm very confused. This looks like it could be from the people who make the inside game. Mosaic. Like inside or um. That was a brand new trailer for Mosaic, a dark and atmospheric adventure game coming later this year from developer Killbite and publisher Raw Fury. So how are you guys enjoying it so far? There's been some swords, some space stations, vampire puberty. We're listening to your reactions to the PC Gaming Show throughout the entire broadcast, no matter what platform you're watching and ranting on. So Hello. keep them coming. Our next game is a ghost-themed multiplayer hide-and-seek game inspired by a popular mod. Charge up your proton packs and get ready for Midnight Ghost Hunt. Midnight Ghost Hunt. <clears throat> All right, so let's... Uh... See what we've got here. When the night falls, there's only you and me. When um, the night falls, okay. you can count on me. Darling, if you only knew. This is like Ghostbusters. So to tell but... you where are you? I got a big surprise. What? Oh, are you the ghost? I think we're the ghost. Ha! Huh? Yeah, we're the ghost. Oh, is this gonna be like you bait okay, so yeah. It's basically like someone's gonna be the ghost and the other people are gonna be the actual like people trying to get you. I bet. So it's gonna be like, um, prop hunt. 
but like an official game. Can they see you jumping from place to place? Got a big surprise for you. I was thinking prop hunt. Yeah, it looks like when a prop I hunt first, kind of game. When I first saw it, I was like, okay. Oh. Okay. That actually looked pretty entertaining to me. I've never played Prop Hunt before, really but yeah, it, can. <laughs> it looks Midnight like that one could Ghost be entertaining Hunt to me. Is the dynamic one-man team, creative one director, team. programmer, designer. It's Sam Malone. Thank you for having me. I would clap simply because Sam, he's like solo. Please <laughs> tell us what is going on in that. What is Midnight Ghost Hunt all about? So, Midnight Ghost Hunt is a multiplayer ghost hunting See, hide and seek. There we go. Yep. Where you can play as either as ghosts or ghost hunters. So, like it's prop hunt. Format. I see. Uh, the ghosts can hide inside average everyday so objects. So, 4v4, that means there's four of them. Uh, the goal is to look like harmless. That would explain creature. the other color. Uh, but on the inside, they're not so harmless ghosts as you saw. Yeah, and I mean, if I'm understanding correctly, it's not about hiding as a lamp to try to assault and take out a hunter. It's actually, you would do that so that way you can keep running away and continue to hide. Exactly, so the main objective of the ghosts is to try to stay hidden as long as they can until the time runs out, until the clock strikes midnight. Midnight being kind of the uh, hour oh, of the yeah. ghosts. Yeah, it's literally prop hunt. Um, That's they can literally what it is. They like, but in general, Except for uh, the fighting they back. try to hide, but if there's a hunter kind of off by himself, he can quickly just hit him in the back of the head and knock him out real quick, and he has less hunters to deal with at that point. See. Well, what, huh. What's the identity of the hunters? I mean, we've been seeing furniture flying all over the place. What are the hunters doing? So the hunters, it kind of can be di uh, divided into two different segments. Uh, the first part of the game is kind of almost like a detective game because they're sort of trying right. to figure out where the ghosts are hiding because it's not really uh, you know, obvious at first glance. So they've got gadgets like a footprint tracker. They've got like a radar like you saw to try to narrow down where in the haunted house these ghosts are hiding, basically. Uh, as soon as the first ghost is found, yeah. though, it starts getting a bit more chaotic. Uh, people, there's ragdolls flying everywhere, and they have that cannon to really try to smash the ghosts into pieces. So those are kind of the two aspects of the ghosts. I see. Well, uh, talk to me a little bit about the inspiration for Midnight Ghost Hunt. I understand it's based on a Gary's Mod mod called Prop Hunt. Right. So uh, that's definitely a big inspiration, but the big twist for us is that the props fight back. You saw the furniture, they hurl themselves yeah. at you, they knock you out, they send you flying. So it kind of almost becomes like this action hide and seek sort of mashup. Uh, you have a reason to be a little bit afraid of uh, the, the things that you're hunting. So that changes yeah. up the dynamic a good amount. And I want to ask about when the clock strikes midnight. We saw the very spooky red color pop up. We didn't see what happens then. What's going on then? So midnight, if even uh, one ghost survives four minutes into the match, then uh, you hear this ominous grandfather clock chime across the map. All the lights will actually flicker out. It'll get really dark and scary. And all the ghosts that were destroyed actually return as vengeful spirits. Uh, they're a lot more powerful than before, and they glow a very brilliant red. So at this point, uh, the tables have turned. The hunters are now the hunted, and they just need to try to work together to uh, stay alive long enough for the evac to come. It's another four <laughs> minutes or so. Cool. And usually wow. the ghosts. That's cool. I like that. Midnight. Are you talking about like ninety like percent of the time? Like nine, yeah, like you, because the ghosts are so overpowered at midnight. Right. The hunters are doing whatever they can to try to prevent midnight from even occurring by destroying all right, of the right. ghosts and clearing the house. Well, awesome. When that can people actually get the chance to try out? Sounds a lot more entertaining than Prop Hunt. Hunt. Yeah, it does, actually. Not going to lie. I would actually play that. I'd also like to give a shout-out to our Discord. Uh, Discord. I'm amazed that you have that domain name. Uh, later in the summer, we'll be giving out keys what was the domain on our Discord. Well Ghosthunt.com. <laughs> like, no one had that? <laughs> no one had that. Yeah. For our next title... We got Frankie up in the balcony, and if I understand correctly, Frankie, this is a sequel. You do understand correctly, Sean, yes. It's a big sequel to a small indie game. Unexplored 2 is a procedural adventure, a roguelike that challenges you to fight, to be clever, and to solve its mysteries. Explore a beautiful world, engage with its creatures, and befriend its people. Search for magic lakes and ancient statues until you die. And die oh, yeah. again. <laughs> Myth is Unexplored 2. Okay. Unexplored too, huh? Yeah. Explore the world until you I die. I feel like you miss a lot when you don't have a PC, huh? <laughs> uh, I mean...
Yeah. Looks familiar. The face? Not the face, just the water ancient statue type. Oh, yeah, that's kind of a constant, ain't it? That's One a trope. The biggest I'm pretty sure. Bang for your buck that you can get when building a new rig is invested. That actually looked in like a, a pretty like chill game, something you can do and Samsung, just like Dean, Del when you're not Welcome trying to be. Dean. What you got for Extra. Us? You just want to be kind of like casual <laughs> at the moment. Well, let's take a look. Uh, curved gaming monitors don't make me happy. What's that? I just don't care about curved. Curved does not sell like it's a cool feature to me. Hertz are important. I like yeah, that. Yeah, hertz are important. But a curved monitor doesn't make me feel better. G-Sync is actually very impressive as a um, way of fixing all the stuttering and actually um, screen tearing. Mm -hmm. Like that, that's actually pretty cool. I do like G-Sync. Dean, we've seen the video. And I gotta start asking, talk to me about some of those juicy features and specs. So it's a 240 hertz curved gaming panel. We believe it's the world's first. So you have lag-free and tear-free performance. Um, and we think that the, the curve, this 1500R radius, is gonna be a very immersive experience you wouldn't get from a traditional flat panel. And I wanted to ask a little bit about some of the color specs. Sure, it's a 3001 contrast ratio. So you get those deeper blacks, brighter whites, right. hopefully you'll see your enemies first before they see you in the dark scenes. Yeah, and I, I understand it also has G-Sync. I saw that flash Samsung up on the screen first as well. first G-Sync compatible monitor, so we're super excited about that. Well, since this is the PC gaming show and we're showing off a huge variety of games here, what are the types of games that you would expect that 240 hertz refresh rate and the G-Sync to work well with? Sure, Titanfall. Everybody's gonna appreciate <laughs> Tracking and pistol. Ultimately, eSports first person Because your pistol's tied to your frame rate. Uh, yeah. Well, of course, I have to So ask, the higher your frame rate, just when is it the faster it shoots what, what to the point where it's like, oh, we're done. We're done. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's time to just hang it up, Chief. Yeah, I would. So it expands our gaming lineup to oh. eight miles. Yeah. Because yeah, when you said 400, I mean, that's 27 inches. Right. Of like, wow. Yeah, so our gaming lineup will be expanded to eight models, ranging from 24 all the way up to a 49 inch dual QHD. Uh, check out samsung.com slash gaming240 or see us in the back of the room for more info. Yeah, that's right. For any of you in the audience, it's there. You can go there for it. It's just 4K. not 4K. It's not 4K. Not for that price point. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. Well, huh. I'll awkward. Let you know that we have yeah, that is awkward. <laughs> yeah, that's an awkward question to have had to answer. Oh, I'm sorry for you. Stay tuned for more announcements. Will it be 4K? No. <laughs> you. Not at all. Gearbox answers burning questions about Borderlands 3. Boo! The next game from Clay Entertainment. Get you ready to boo? rip the galaxy. I don't like Gearbox. Yeah. I don't like. And more. Randy Pitchford. <laughs> and since he is Gearbox, sucks Gearbox. You make cool games, but hey, can't forget can't. him. And now the PC game show him. presents. What's next from Funcom? I guess I'll just ask later, but what's your issue with him? We have a whole playthrough to get through with Exactly. That one. A whole playthrough. <laughs> it's gonna be a Hello, fun everyone. old time. Thanks for warm applause. <laughs> I'm um, looking forward to it. It's very exciting for all Wait, of us this lady? to be here at the PC gaming show. Natasha Bruce Lee. And naturally we would like to show some of the cool stuff that we've been working on. So, without further ado, here are some of the games coming for 2019. Okay. So, 
Something strange is going on. Oh yeah. That's the expansion pack. Until now. For Mutant Year Zero. Road to Eden. Oh, is that um It's like imagine Edscom but mutants. Okay. A lot's happened since you've been traveling, Khan. You could use your skills. Okay. Stalkers got each other's backs, right? What happens to you happens to me. Conan Unconquered. Yeah, that's the new Conan game. Wave 15, not nah, good. Uh. That man just summoned a god, not nah, good. <laughs> Moons of Madness. Oh, that sounds cool. Jeez. Well, in the name of Cthulhu? You know, it's been a minute since I played a good horror game. I hope that's, uh... uh who would have thought? Really? My son. Yeah, I haven't played Off a good horror game in a while. Stars. Huh. The well, title might have been really good that came out. I'm kind of upset that you missed them. I'm the upset stage. that I missed them. Founder then. and director of Mighty what Kingdom, be... Philip Mays. Oh, we can talk about that later. Oh, yeah, there's a ton though. You'd enjoy them, hopefully. Yeah, I like the horror games. So yeah, at Funcom we've been doing our own games for over 26 years now. But recently we had the great pleasure to be working with some other very talented developers and help them publish their games. Cool deal. And on that note, I'd like to introduce Phil Mays. Uh, he is founder of Mighty Kingdom, a studio out of Australia, who has been working with us on something a little different. Thank you, Natasha. So on April 1st this year, we put out a little trailer for something called Conan Chop Chop. And uh, considering the date, it was perhaps no surprise that people decided that that was uh, April Fool's joke. So uh, yeah, we have a little surprise for you. Check this out. <laughs> Do you though? Do, Do you, you really? really? <laughs> He was like, hey, we thought it was an April Fool's joke, so it's not legit. But wait a minute. Hold, Hold on. on. <laughs> Give me a you. chance. No. <laughs> the best Conan game yet. I don't think that's a really high bar, though. Is it? I don't think so. Like, they're average, usually. <laughs> a game that's definitely not real, but probably should be. What? Is that a mobile game? No, let's go to my Switch. <laughs> I, I saw it. that. Yeah. I saw that. <laughs> so I always gotta look and be like, I see the Switch. <laughs> action adventure game. Uh, it's I'm always down for another roguelike. I like those. PC, Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and wow. Nintendo Switch on September the 3rd this year, 2019. So, so I said, wow. A playable it's version going here like all at demo it looks so like it could. Stick figure I mean, yeah. Then yeah. It looks like it could go on whatever it wants. Like a Bethesda game. What do you think its potential is? Now that it's being average, where the Earth has average, rotating. as on, all the on, other ones on mobile, <laughs> forgotten. I mean, <laughs> good times. But cheer up, sunshine. This not even looked at, probably on a PlayStation Four or a Xbox One. Microsoft Might do moderately on a Switch, though. Maybe okay on PC. That's about how I see it. Maybe. I feel like it would be depends a more on of price. a mobile game though. I feel like it would 
do well as a mobile game. It might actually do well on my Switch. I can see it. Can't see it doing that well on a PlayStation. No. Or, or an Xbox. Xbox One. Yeah, I was going to say, or an Xbox. What are we looking at? No clue. Missed that part. They are not horses, though. What in the world? What okay. is this? I don't know how to feel. Oh, they're fighting them. Is this that, like that um, Icarus airship battle game? You know what I'm talking about? Nope. Okay. No clue what you're talking about. Man, technology progressed in the weirdest of ways in this world. Not gonna lie. <laughs> if this is what you're... No, I'm just like, no, if anything. If technology advanced like this, this would be a weird world. Oh, yeah. And you can't tell me otherwise. Like, oh, it's nonsense. <laughs> Oh! <laughs> <I can open. laughs> Rapid fire! It's like medieval yet futuristic in its. And yet not futuristic, exactly except that's huge. Like, what? It's a, oh, Last Oasis. Okay. Last Oasis. <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> like just thinking disgusting. about it. Disgusting. Planet Ball. All right. Age of Wonders is cool. Turn based. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like think. Um, not to like s simplify, but think of Civ, mm -hmm. but future. Okay. There's a lot more to it than that, but that's like the easiest way to just talk about it. It's got a head sport thing and, you know, future. Actually, I'm seeing it. Yeah. Wait, those look like big-ass penguins. They were. <laughs> What's your point? <laughs> <laughs> Holy crap, they're attacking. Yeah, they're penguins in the future. Well, they're not penguins in the future, they're aliens, but whatever. Imagine an entire galactic civilization mm -hmm. just falling apart and then all the factions being like, hey, we're back, we still survived, we want to start over, and everyone's got their own ideas. There you go. and principal gameplay developer Tom Bird. Welcome, guys. Good to be here. So, Leonard, just give us the gist of what Age of Wonders Planetfall is all about. Sure. Age of Wonders is a turn-based strategy game where you play as one of the survivors of a shattered galactic empire. At the start of the game, you choose or, or create your own faction. Yeah. They include uh, the Vanguard Expeditionary Forces, who are in cryosleep when everything went to hell. Um, there's scavenging cyborgs, or the Amazon bioengineers who ride dinosaurs into battle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and these somebody who's going to do it. This is pretty broad Down range bottom, of goats, core strategy uh, sky pirateness. To give a sense <laughs> of what the game is, <laughs> at the beginning of a game, what happens when you first land on the planet? Well, um, each race has their own spaceship. The spaceship comes down onto the planet. The planet is where the entire game takes place. And that spaceship will then transform into your capital colony, where your entire empire begins, your sort of attempt to take over the world. Around you, you've got a number of sectors, and each of these sectors has a little story. Well, not most of them. So maybe you'll find a genetics lab, which is still full of horrible mutant creatures, an entertainment complex overrun by horrible robot monsters, a temple with holes in the sky and horrible demons who come and get you. <laughs> He's very passionate and I did about see in this. The trailer, dinosaurs with lasers, correct? Dinosaurs yeah. with lasers. Perfect. Talk about penguins. With lasers. No, sorry. No cats with lasers. I'm so sorry to disappoint all of you. No <laughs> cats with lasers. You have to settle with dinosaurs. <laughs> you know, I saw the expansive tech tree show up in the game briefly, and I know that growing resources and tech is a huge part of yeah. strategy games. How does that function? Right. So part of these tech trees come from your origin race. They sort of represent the past where you came from. They include new units, uh, new modules for your units, like jetpacks for your troopers, orbital laser cannons that you can launch from space, uh, social doctrines, not all about war. Um, yeah. And then uh, the second part of your tech tree comes from your secret technology, and that's all about the future of your faction. Uh, so you can create like a combination between man and machine, or man and computers. Yeah. Uh, others include doomsday technologies that allows you to infect the entire population with alien brain-eating parasites, wow. or win the game by uh, splitting space time. I love how many details. It's cool. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's <laughs> cool. Let me just um, stop you there. <laughs> Control, <laughs> alt, delete, universe. Yep. Games, the combat can be very brief. It just you know 
shows two armies pinging off each other, but I understand that the tactical layer is quite rich. Yes. Right, so when combat starts, you'll see like on the world map, maybe like a little sort of space lab or something like that. When you combat, go into combat, you will zoom all the way in and you will be inside the lab. You'll see all the pipes and all of the goops flowing around. All of your units, which you've been putting together and built, are now deployed in turn-based combat. You can move them into cover, use your abilities, shoot laser cannons. Maybe you've chosen the Dvar, so you've got like a bunch of space dwarves and little yeah. metal suits that have big holes in the ground, like shoot from the, from the holes. Maybe you've chosen the they Kirk, the horrible trenches. alien bug monsters. They run forwards and slash people and puke acid on them, that kind of thing. I mean, how, how long do these thing. battles wind up lasting? It depends. A short battle can be maybe uh, two or three minutes, but at the end of the game, you know, you've got a massive siege with like 20 units on your side, 20 units on their side. You've got yep. all little cannons blasting wow. holes in the world. And that can maybe take 30 minutes. Wow. Well, talk to us about when we can play the game. The game is due uh, this August 6th. It's going to be available on PC, multiple platforms, consoles, uh, mm -hmm, and it's mm -hmm. available for pre-order now. Yeah, it, it is. Well, right. yeah. I know, because I pre-ordered it. Uh, uh, it's <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm looking forward to it. It's less than two months away. Gentlemen, thanks so much. I love my strategy games. games. They, they make a good right. one, too. So. Bye-bye, guys. Thank, Thank you for sharing the horrors of the future. <laughs> Fight for real. And for our next game, Frankie, I have to ask you, what year is it? Why? The year is 1946, Sean, my dear boy. Europe lies in ruins, torn apart by the satanic Plan D. A brave band of heroes cast their Fuhrer into hell, but little do they know, the nightmare is far from over. Achtung! This is the world-exclusive reveal of the next shooter from the makers of Sniper Elite 4. Oh, yeah. really? Yes. <laughs> actually know a little something about Sniper Elite. Is it because it comes out on a console? Yes, <laughs> exactly. Oh. Rated M for Mature. Great. <laughs> Great. <laughs> well, I'm glad this could hold your interest. Yeah, that's all she had to say with Sniper Elite. I know what I'm looking for now. So let's see. Well, that's unfortunate for you, sir. Was it worth it? That's not helpful. Oh, my. oh he's, he, he's 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 having a good old time. He's, yeah, he's he's enjoying himself. Oh, that is cool too. Oh. Oh, it's nasty. So wait, that z that zombie has. Yes. So, would you say he's like, uh. Some intelligence? Uh, yeah, there yeah. we go. on you for being able to lift that up and go about your day. Right? Jesus. <laughs> you know this reminds me of... Um, zombie army? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, are you gonna get what it is or not? Because they make the say, same game. <laughs> yeah, I actually have that on my console, believe yeah. it or not. I have the trilogy on my console. Yeah, so. yeah, and that's how you, I was like, okay, you know what this is. You, I, I, did you think it was a sniper rifle? <laughs> okay. Hey! Are we gonna get to see our JoJo stuff? Is this what you were talking about last week? 
Like, when they talked about they're gonna do their best to get JoJo stuff into Warframe. Yeah. I'm hoping that they show something from JoJo in Warframe. I'd lose my mind. That'd be cool. It'd have to be. I haven't played Warframe in so long, man. A hundred years. It only gets better as you play it. It only gets better as you play it. (laughs) It's so crazy. I know. They've already gone to, like, actual, like. Destiny. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. And I, I've seen it, but the part where I'm at is still not Destiny. That's because the game... <laughs> and that's the part that gets you. They don't update old worlds, they just update going forward, so you have to get to it. I know, and it's just like, I don't want to do that grind. You yeah, got to. You rise to meet it. A trial like is this our Baldur's Gate? It's always nice to not be a human every single game you play. No, you're a human. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, so the creature that we saw was not... Oh yeah, you fight those creatures. You don't get to be them. What are you thinking? Oh, man. I'm so tired of being human. Okay, so this is not Baldur's Gate, but what is this nonsense? Remnant. Okay. From the ashes. It looks pretty good. It looks cool. Something like I'd play. Because that's guns? No, <laughs> just the uh, play style in general. Oh, okay. Joining Dodging me on the combat. stage to talk about Remnant from the Ashes um, in that trailer. We got the chance to see so much new gameplay footage and new environments. Let's welcome the CEO of Gunfire Games, David Adams. Gunfire Games. What else did they make? I don't, I don't know. know. So, David, I want to ask right away for those who are unfamiliar Remnant. with Remnant from the Ashes, what kind of game is it? So Remnant's a co-op action shooter set on an apocalyptic earth and across a bunch of cool fantasy worlds. And I mean, in that trailer, we got the chance to see a huge variety of different environments. Like, what are these different places? Who's the player in this story? So as a player, the player is sad because he's gonna die. Like, <laughs> the world Ain't is, nothing uh, you can do about that. We one. really wanted to have a bunch of different cool locales that you go to just to experience a bunch of different stuff. And you start on Earth, but it, it rapidly changes very quickly as you get into the game. And one thing that we've you know, talked about before is that replayability is a huge focus of the game, that you could play through it 10 times and still be seeing new bosses, new monsters, new locations. How exactly does that work? Yeah, I think one of the coolest features of the game is the dynamic generation system. So we generate the maps, the enemies, the quests, NPCs, bosses, everything. You, you built those all by hand, right? Yeah, it's all hand scripted, but the system takes all the pieces and stitches it together. So you might play the game and come into work and say, hey, I talked to a giant tree and fought a dragon boss, and I'd be like, I met a guy in a helicopter, an old guy in a helicopter, and killed a tree ant. And we'd have completely different experiences. And oh, that's cool. And you just have to keep going through and eventually explore what all the possibilities are. Yeah, you can play the game over and over again to see the stuff. You can jump into your friend's world to experience the content in their world, and that's a big part of the game, just jumping in. and. That does sound like fun. Well, yeah. I want to ask about loot, which is, you know, I understand, a big part of the game. How does it function alongside this ever shifting That's a unique creature. Experience? Is it, yeah, though? The, the is all legendary items, and it's tied into the, the rank, uh, dynamic dragon. generation. So if you yeah, it's a, a dragon made of trees. Or an NPC <laughs> or get a cool, unique side quest. It generally coincides. Don't you think that's kind of counterproductive? Uh, I'm made of tree. Let me shoot out fire. Yeah, so I feel like game, you get all completely different events, someone so just like, well, unless you're not made of fire, so unless you're made out of root. But you like you're made out of roots. These. You mentioned the co-op experience. Made out of something. I definitely. You're doing like one point there. Per, he's doing one point per bullet. <laughs> yeah, you saw that. <laughs> I still see it. <laughs> no, that's twenty-one. Awesome. There's a huge advantage to bringing your friends to come in there and help you take. That's his weak spot. <laughs> that big glowing spot? That big that's, glowing a, spot? Yeah, that's a big weak spot. That, that sounds like it'd be a weak spot. <laughs> Probably shooting in your eyes would also be a weak spot. Where can people go for more information? So Remnant's coming out uh, August 20th. Is it on Remnant.com? And Xbox and PS4. And if you pre-order the game now, you can actually get in early and start playing the game August 16th. Oh, oh RemnantGame.com. David Adams from My Game Bad. Games. My so bad. Talk about I'm so sorry. Whoops. <laughs> And as we mentioned earlier, keep those questions coming. I will be asking on stage the creative director of Borderlands 3 everything you want to know. Doesn't matter what platform you're on, just use hashtag PC Gaming Show. And until that time, let's talk about our next title. This one was announced two years ago at the PC Gaming Show here. It's a game from Clay Entertainment called Grisslands. It's changed quite a bit in the last two years. It's Hmm. now a deck-building roguelike where you don't just fight, but you also negotiate your way through a broken-down sci-fi world. 
It's going to be available on the Epic Game Store in one oh. week on July 11th in oh, Alpha. It comes out Take next a look at some month. Of the footage. I'm so upset that they keep on mentioning that trash store. Oh, this is yeah, that's what we saw one. earlier. Okay. Uh -huh. Oh. That's pretty funny, actually. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Uh, bad deck again. Is that something I can get into? <laughs> that sounds complicated. I like my complications. Whoa, it's you can have it. <laughs> <laughs> You're so simple in your game one. I am. <laughs> I like my simplicities. No, it's got to be as complicated as possible. <laughs> no. Now, Piers, what kind of zoo are we going to be running here? So, Planet Zoo is a new management sim game from us. Um, it involves you building and looking after a modern zoo, and you get to look after... Oh man, I heard about this. We I saw it seen. a little bit earlier. Each of our animals are unique. It's like, plan it's a planet coaster by zoo. Yeah. Which makes sense, because it's made by the people who make planet coaster. So, with the world whatever. <laughs> so, whatever. So today, for the very first time, but if it's like Zoo Tycoon, I'm in. A gameplay well, video zoo and to announce our launch. It's like oh, roller coaster tycoon, but with animals. Family oh, okay. and take a look like the life. words say. <laughs> oh, yeah. Made by the people who make roller coaster tycoon, so that makes sense too. But <laughs> this right here, this looks nice. Oh, that's cool. I'm not sending people in those cages. I wouldn't be one of them. On your dream zoo. Oh, those are the worst animals ever. Hippos are absolutely evil. <laughs> oh man, is your boat trying to get through these waters? Watch out for that rock. Oh no, the rock moved? It's a hippo? It's upset? <laughs> Guess everyone's gotta die. Stupid animal. Jesus <laughs> Christ. You have some um, issues with hippos. They're so territorial. <laughs> I'll probably buy that. So it's legit just Lisa, you guys raising I a zoo. Some of the yeah. Shenanigans here. I mean, hippos pooing. Yes. Adorable baby elements. It's absolutely brilliant. I can't wait to play it. But before we saw the trailer, Piers mentioned this is a modern zoo, but what exactly does that mean? So nowadays when you go to the zoo, you're not just going to see all the lovely pretty animals. You go there, you want to be, you know, learning about conservation. Uh, you want to learn about the research that they're doing. You want to be educated. And these are all things that you're going to be able to do in Planet Zoo. Awesome. And these ideas of the modern zoo is really what we take to heart. And we're going to be promoting, you know, the health and the welfare of your animals. Cool. The most I like that. Thing to do. And cool. Piers, cool. when can we see more gameplay and when are we going to be able to get our hands on it ourselves? So we're um, obviously demoing the game all, um, all this week at E3, but most people aren't going to be able to see that. So we've recorded our presentation. Lisa's done a fantastic voice. Oh man, record. Summer Beta. We'll be releasing that onto Frontier's YouTube channel. That goes live this Friday at 11 a.m. Pacific time. Well, fantastic. PlanetZooGame.com. Thank you so much for joining us. Here's but wait, 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 wait. When is it supposed to come out? Next up. We November. Oh, like November 5th. Okay. Yeah. <gasps> Japan. Who is it? Who's important enough? I hope it's someone cool. <laughs> I hope it's someone cool. <gasps> Shenmue! 
You know what Shenmue is? Right. Nope. Okay, never mind. Ladies and gentlemen, gonna tell me. Are you going to talk about Shenmue 3? What? You're not tell me. It's, Mr. Yu it's about a dude who's looking for his dad. So he does odd jobs around the town. In addition to being the brains behind the following games, Hang On, Space Harrier, Outrun, Afterburner, Virtual Racing, and Virtual Fighter, Yusan. Also called oh, I know the Virtual Shenmue Fighter. Shenmue series. Okay, well, I didn't... Talk about <laughs> <Shenmue> three, <laughs> we were talking about Shenmue! <laughs> Shenmue! We ain't talking about Virtual Fighter? I'd love to see Virtual Fighter, but you're gonna talk about Shenmue. I'm standing on the stage today. This is so wholesome. It's a Japanese man having another Japanese man translate it thank you and say it in English with a Japanese accent. For the wrong 20 years. Thank you very much. Yes. <laughs> We've hit so many layers. <laughs> so now he's going to hear this question when he asks him, and he's probably going to have to translate it. Let's take a world exclusive look at Shenmue 3. I guess they could just. Well, let's see what this is, because I would really like to know. Shimu 3 was kickstarted. I think it's the largest Kickstarter, actually. Honestly, I don't think your Kung Fu is strong enough. From a percentage standpoint. Uh, Grandmaster, I... A long time ago, martial arts were bad, but humans are interesting creatures. They practiced in secret, away from prying eyes, and became stronger. One even practiced atop this very boat. Nam Tren survived the ban and was passed on in this way. Well, that's pretty cool. Of a fighting style? Fight on this boat! Don't get knocked off! <laughs> what did you say to me? Stop it. They threaten and extort money from shop owners, get drunk by noon, and cause trouble. Everyone in town is afraid of them. They are heartless. Hey, wait right there! <laughs> are you okay? <laughs> They were willing to kill a child. Chinese <laughs> guy, you got in our way. You've got some Jesus. here on your own. The muscles on that guy, huh? And you said the one before this, he was looking for his father. So no, they've all been about him looking for his father. Like oh, so they're Thank just. You so much. Thank you. Yeah, Same. we have. We never found his father. Wow. <laughs> we'll find him now. <laughs> Maybe. Gosh, dang it. <laughs> Now our next time. We better. <laughs> to my childhood heart. It's based upon a game I grew up playing called Heroes of Might and Magic 2. Oh. Huh. Let's take a look at an upcoming collaboration between Coffee Stain Studios and Lava Potion. That sounds like a deadly concoction right there. Which one, Coffee Stain or Lava Potion? The two. Oh. <laughs> I mean, one sounds like an annoyance to my cleaning OCD. The other one sounds like it could actually kill me. We are in debt or in living. It's name. It's Oh, they're singing. I was like, what is going on? Those boots are huge. That one's got a nice sway to him, you know? Songs of Conquest. Classic adventure strategy. That sounds like something for you. You yeah. got it. The name of what has been here for you? <laughs> I guess zombies. Yeah, the zombies. And um, Remnant. Carl yep. hey, Carl. So far. Hey, something here for everybody. For anyone who maybe hasn't played the Heroes of Might and Magic series, what is Song of Conquest all about? Um, it's all about, um, well, you kind of start off with in the town that you just saw in the end of right. the trailer. And uh, from there, you recruit your wielders, is what we call our commanders. 
and uh, yeah. you recruit an army, and then you kind of send off your wielders on an adventure. And they go exploring yeah. the world, they pick up resources, they flag mines, and with those resources, you upgrade your town so you can get more stuff, and that's kind of what you do. Adventure and strategy. Come yeah, on. we're going to get and forklift you know, races <laughs> in <laughs> Shinmu. <laughs> obviously, get the resources to build up the township, but yeah. for what reason? Armies, man. Talk to me about those juicy battles. Yeah, so, so the battle, just like the whole game, is turn-based. Uh -huh. So you go into combat, you bring all your troops in, and you start by deploying them, and then all the troops have different stats, like offense and defense and health sure, and so sure. on. And they go in initiative order, and then you slug it out, and it's a bit like chess, but instead of like pawns and bishops, you have like horned wands and face turrets. Great. <laughs> yeah. Griffins and so on. Yeah, and all those things. And well, you know, as, as someone who just loves the Heroes of Might and Magic series, I know that you have translated a lot of the gameplay elements into Songs of Conquest, yeah. but what are some of the modern elements that you're bringing in? Um, well, there's a lot of it, but I mean, one of them is our magic system. We call it the essence. So basically, uh -huh. um, in our in the Songs of Conquest universe, everything has an essence within them. So Not in regards to this, truth, but uh, that Planet Zoo yeah. game. Did, magic, is it going to be on multi-platform, right or is that just PC? Oh, yeah. I see. So I wanna, uh, do not you know. know. Your, I imagine it will start on PC, and, and it might get transferred over. A lot of games have started doing that, where it's like you don't stay on a solid platform. Yeah, Unless I was thinking I might goal. actually oh, get it. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Not so personally for me, but mm -hmm. I do have individuals who love that kind of into stuff. That stuff. Yeah, mm -hmm. so yeah I know that for me, I get it. Because my sister loves those things, mm -hmm. and we share the same Steam account. Like, she has her own Steam, but we Steam share games. Gotcha. So, yeah, and that's where I'm thinking about it as well. Yeah. It's like, hey, you could play you this know, in your spare time. I know you enjoy this type of stuff. Same how she is with my Sims. We share the Sims, so it's like, eh. Yeah, and the individual I'm thinking of actually loves animals, so it's like perfect for them. It's not even just like, a, you might like this. I know for a fact you're going to like this. Yeah. So I what you thinking. got right here? But I mean, I still have my basic laptop, so it should be able to run on that, right? Maybe? Possibly? Well, what's up next? <laughs> <laughs> After endless hordes. Is this some... Like, um, rat people. Oh, Is this Warhammer? I haven't played a Warhammer game in a while either. I think this is Vermintide. This is Vermintide too. I'm pretty sure. It's you. Oh, are we the rats? Am I the vermin now? Nuke. Smell my stench. I'm Wolverine. <laughs> yeah, vermin tide versus. That's cool. Made up sign up. All right. I was like, this looks like a Warhammer. Interesting. Yeah. You ever played Warhammer? Yes. You, just saw the you ever played the Vermintide games? No, I've not. Coming to Vermintide too, okay. which turns the Warhammer fantasy but game into I did enjoy Warhammer. Which one? Uh, 40k? It looks um. Vile. And surely this member of the um, so much more satisfying when you I'm know you're going ham on a fellow it, player, making him or her tiny little favorite it wasn't behind their computer screens. You can sign up now for the vermin <laughs> So I don't want to tell you the wrong thing, you know. Space Marine? I think it was Space Marine. Okay. Well, you're an artificial consciousness orbiting Mars, whose ultimate purpose is to terraform the planet. Starting from a single this has been a while. I probably Space Marine. Was it a dude with a giant dome helmet and smoking a cigar? Yeah. That yeah, was all right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want a sequel to that. That would be nice. Wouldn't it? Wouldn't it? As we all know, yeah. I think I could stand clearly after experiencing so much in this PC gaming show. Like, I definitely need to expand my knowledge of games. Isn't it? Yeah, I know, right? That's why I wanted. Yeah, like the E3 is good for that to be like, hey, you may not have heard of this or this or this or that. Yeah, definitely. I'm on the ladder of you haven't heard of this. this? <laughs> We're on sequel. You haven't even heard of the original. Exactly. That's okay. I was watching um, Bethesda one, and they showed, like, Captain Keen, mm -hmm. and everyone's like, what's Captain Keen? I was like, I am not old enough for you people to say that. Of course. <laughs> I know I'm the oldest of us all, but please don't make me feel old. That's hilarious. Oh, that's cool. 
I love games that let me go on Mars and build it up. Like, I'm a sucker for it <laughs> to an extent Just that is... Just Mars in particular? <laughs> yes. I don't know what it is, but I'm like, oh man, Mars, let's go. I've got like five games on my Steam account. I don't even think I've played half, like, most of them about, like, going on Mars. <laughs> I'm like, yeah! <laughs> Another Mars game? Let's go! I'm going to buy freaking Gorilla, um, what is it? The remastered game for the Switch? You know what I'm talking about? No. Red Faction Gorilla? Then where no, no years? idea what that is. Okay, cool. <laughs> come back on the big stage at E3. Literally, <laughs> if it's not like, if it hasn't been like world known, it is world known. No, 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 no. I mean, I'm talking like ads everywhere. It's an older game, but it's being remastered, or is they saying remastered? Remastered. Mars. Gotcha. Oh, I want this! I want this! Don't want to ruin it for him. Easier to do, because I won't have to build a city. I won't have to build technology. And I was a bit naive, because we built Africa ten million years ago. That's but, and that's not easy to build. It doesn't sound easy. I mean, how have you turned those scenes into gameplay? Well, y you play our last common ancestors, right, of all the big apes, and then you have to explore your, your environment, and eventually you expand your territory, you expand your clan, because you're not playing that one badass character. You play a group of badass character. And eventually you evolve into different species, up until Lucy the Australopithecus, roughly two million years ago. I imagine our ancestors had uh, a lot more issues to deal with than we do today. There's going to be a lot more dangers in this world. Well, they just smash. Well, it's all about from a prey to a predator. Basically, at the beginning of the game, everybody is there to kill you and devour you. And, and, and basically, at the end, it's pretty much you. So this is like Planet afraid. of the Apes. And that's that's the idea of ancestors. Except like, so Patrice, ultimately, there are only Planet of the Apes. It's not like <laughs> the apes rose up and took out humans. It's like the apes are rising up to become humans. Gotcha. And you start out as our last known common ancestor. Okay. Like our earliest known common ancestor. Which primate is like there's, best? There's no story per se inside. Is, it's not about uh, going and see mission givers. It's not about looking at the mean man the little guy. It's yes. like a monkey. It's about you well, I know they're all monkeys there. But well, they're not. Survive like our what, did, what type of monkey is it given? Isn't Gib I think Gibbons the one with the big old nose. For you to answer that <laughs> oh, is that? August 27th. Give me a second. Well, I so like the one from first. freaking Lion King? What? The monkey from Lion King. No, that's a different monkey. Oh. And you, can learn more you said big nose and I thought I was... No, like, this is a given. I was wrong. Oh yeah, that was your way off. Yeah, yeah, what was I thinking about? <laughs> my phone. I'm, I'm trying to see! This one, that's what I was thinking. You, you've heard of these, right? Yeah, I've heard of those. Oh, okay. No, they're Shinmu! Woo! Three. Three. Mm. That was the game you just saw. I'm excited for that. That's actually really cool. Like, you basically play as a um, primate, and you have a whole family of primates, and you take control of all of them, start as a prey, and then you move up yourself to a predator. It's going to be really cool. That looks cool. cool. Yeah. I want that. I'm getting that one. That? Untitled Goose Game? Yes. Why? I gotta be a goose. <laughs> okay. Listen. <laughs> Phantom Brigade. Tanks. Oh. Oh my. Mechs. Atomicrops. Huh. That looks kind of fun. Rune? What? With the golf. What? Okay. Wait! <laughs> no! That's no, that's more moves. That's frustrating. <laughs> that's not a fun time at all. Forget that game. <laughs> it can go away forever. That dude did a drop kick. Did you see that? Yeah, he, he did, did a drop, drop kick drop on that kick. man. The foot is mightier than the sword! <laughs> what? No. Oh, that's made by the Adventure Time people. That looks like that art style. Dude, he... That, he just wailed on that thing. 
He destroyed it. Oh, and one more thing. What? What am I looking at? What is this? We're supposed to be excited for I'm it, not. but <laughs> I don't know what this I'm is. I'm confused. It's some mobile game. It has to be. Auto chess. I hate it. I hate it. That's the... Chess should not be played on auto. Please welcome to the stage, Loring Lee, founder and CEO of Dragon Nest. Dragon Nest. Indeed, auto chess has turned Ooh. out to be a sensation. Are we Hundreds starting with auto chess? The game we just said we didn't want to hear about. It, and oh. here to talk about oh. coming to PC is yeah. Loring Lee. Take it away, Loring. Yeah. Hello, everyone. I'm Loring Lee. How's it going? I got that. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Hello. I'm the CEO and founder of Dragon's Game. Dragon's Game is a game developer and a publisher coming from China. I'm so happy to be here today on this stage to introduce our game. Are you owned by Tencent? To all of you. I feel this like you're owned by really Tencent. <laughs> As all of China is owned by Tencent. Test, this is a real engaging game of auto chess. Dragon's Game now is working with the creator of, okay, of auto chess, Dodo Studio. Uh, we are working together to bring auto chess to our world, both on PC and uh, mobile, so that it's everyone from anywhere yep. with any device can enjoy the same fun of auto chess. Now we are building the PC version with, uh, by using the uh, game engine of Unreal Engine 4. As everyone Unreal knows, Engine 4 makes sense. Yeah. Unreal Engine is one of the Since best Tencent owns part of Epic. Of the world. With, yeah. the help, with the help of Apple Games and uh, by the power of uh, Unreal, I believe we can finish our job quickly and efficiently. And uh, today... So it's not completely developed but yet, is what he's saying, but the PC he's, they're working on it. Yeah, they're working on finishing it. They'll be coming to the Epic up. Games store. I look forward... Oh, jeez. Uh, yeah. Epic Games store. Epic Games store. store. <laughs> it's a lot of that chat. going around there. Later this year. Okay, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Loring Lee. Yeah, cool. Thank you. Thanks so much for yeah. sharing the news with us. Once again, Auto Chess, if you have not played it, you must check it out. It is so fun. Wait, how Our can... next title with Frankie up above. It's on mobile. I understand it's an Oh, it's our, so they're just trying to bring it to PC well, yes. now. Oh, okay. So one of the things we love about PC gaming is the I way thought they were saying that it was, they were the working on they're working on the bringing mobile it one. to both Chris of them. Charles is a great example gotcha. of that. A gorgeous indie love letter to classic JRPGs developed by a team in Colombia. Chris Hale's spin on the genre brings a unique perspective that lets you see the past, present, and future on one screen at the same time. What is this game? So you'll see the future change no based on your decisions in real time. Here's the world exclusive reveal of Chris Tales. Chris Tales. So do you kind of understand what world exclusive means now? Yeah. Like it's not exclusive to the platform? Yeah, it yeah. just means it's shown this is here how first. you see it. Yeah. <gasps> Two steps from hell. If you saw what was, which song is this? And what would be? If you knew how. I know this song too. Would you change it? Could you make the hard decision? I want this game just because this music started playing. <laughs> what? <laughs> hey, I got sold super hard. Also, nice art style. Unique art style. Yeah. I like it. Oh, oh. All the same time? And act in the what? You can rewrite the future. What? Oh, they went with the version that doesn't have vocals. Chris Dales. Coming next year, though. See, now you play that, and now I expect nothing but them to have your actual um, Two Steps From Hell soundtrack, the, the whole thing, no, and it won't be, and I'm disappointed it. now. And I'm holding one of the, well, well quite frankly, it's, it's a bit average, isn't it? It's just your average, you know, Glock, really. No, it's one of the ridiculous alien weapons from our next game, Valfaris. 
a brutal heavy metal infused 2D action platformer inspired by true old school classics like Contra and Turrican. Assuming I see that Contra. Warifarium, players must blast and slash their way through the doomed citadel of Valfaris, overcoming its deadly environments and enemies before challenging the arcane evil at its very heart. Get ready to rip the galaxy a new wormhole from publisher Big Sugar. This is Balfaris. Where'd she go? I feel like I've seen this somewhere before. I don't, I don't think it's for, this is not for me. I'm not feeling it. That's a lot. Huh? I said that's a lot. It looks familiar yeah, though, like I've seen some They said it was inspired by like Contra and stuff. excited for our next okay. guest. In case you have not been in downtown LA, E3 is covered with Borderlands 3 art. It's amazing, it's beautiful. And joining me is the amazing and beautiful Paul Sage, creative director <laughs> of Borderlands 3. Beautiful's a new one, thanks. Yeah, is Randy go, going to Paul. jail yet? <laughs> Can he go to jail? Around Borderlands 3. What Dang it. You're really excited Dang to be it. sharing this year at E3. Oh man, so you know, we've talked about our vault hunters. Well, this time we get to talk about Moe's and she is our uh, gunner vault hunter. So yeah. she has a big mech, so it's one of the things. All about loot, we're talking about, you know, the different loot, such as shields, grenades, those yeah. things, going to different planets, so a lot of stuff to talk about. Well, I mean, I wanna start right off with Moe's. Tell us everything you can about her. Okay, yes, I'll tell you everything I can. So Moe's, again, like I said, she's a mech pilot. She has this big mech, it's called Iron Bear. She gets into Iron Bear. Yeah. You know, we have multiple action skills, which means that she can equip either a minigun or a rail gun or a flamethrower, you know, if you wanna barbecue your enemy, something like that. Oh, so, nice. You Mixed know, uh, yeah, Moe's is a, a terrifically fun character for us right now. Now, we've been excited to be collating a whole bunch of community questions. We're gonna break them into two categories. First, there's a whole bunch of repeat questions that I wanna make sure we get to right now. One of the big categories is about loot, because you've mentioned having a billion guns earlier, but what can you tell us about some of the other gear, the other progression systems right. in the game? Yeah, so uh, you, let's talk about grenades, like one of my favorite things that we don't get to talk about a lot. So in the past, we've had grenades. If they've had yeah. like one thing, they can bounce, they can stick to different things, you know? Yeah. This time, we're combining like all of those things. So for instance, the other day I was playing and I threw a grenade and that grenade had a bounce, it would stick, an explosion would come out and the grenade would fire guns as it was going through, right? So we have like Jeez. a ton of different <laughs> yeah. grenades that, that are in there. They've got some really creative guns. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Where if you duck, that shield will oh, really oh. out in front of you. You know, so uh -huh. just like tons of different uh -huh. we have you know, with our characters. Ah! Uh -huh. <laughs> no! What is going on? This time as well. The weather. Connectivity. <laughs> I, I also remember earlier you mentioned about artifacts. The weather is being a butt. So artifacts are, you know, we we've kind of concentrated on like, hey. Does the game feel fluid? Can I right, slide still, into things? Can I jump? We're still alive. <laughs> we're still alive. We we slid we're just right the barrel barely hanging on, I guess. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. So why don't we do Let me like check our, our stream. <laughs> things to movement. So for instance, you can slide faster. You can slide, and every time you slide, there's an explosion. We have something we call we call. Uh, second category of questions unrelated to second category of questions unrelated Jesus. to loot. Well, there's going to be a single player campaign. What's going to be happening after the campaign? What are some of the beyond the single player, maybe end game content that you can talk about? All right, end game content. Okay, well, it's E3, so I give a little bit. So we have a thing what we call the Guardian system. So for those people who played Borderlands before, you might remember Badass Ranks. Badass Ranks, you can get, you know, it's basically kind of an infinite progression system that added to your stats. Yeah. We doubled down on that. We have what we call Guardian Ranks. And Guardian Rank not only has that infinite progression, it's still alive, so we're good. Different skins that you can open up as you go through. And the cool thing about that is, like, every character that you play on on that account yeah. gets the benefits of Guardian Rank. Oh, interesting. All right, last category we're going to go through, and then we're going to hit some rapid. Hey, that's you right questions. there. 
How do the boss fights in Borderlands Wait, 3 compare to Borderlands Lots of games I've never heard of. It sounds really interesting. <laughs> Right, so I think of a boss fight, you know, like I, I'm an old school Nintendo fan, right? So I love huge boss fights that have like oh, three yeah. phases and stuff like that. So now those people, you know, smart people in the audience know that we've talked about going to vaults instead of vault, right? And so there are right, different right. like huge boss encounters there uh, that are just, you know, multi-phase boss encounters. We have like a lot of different mini bosses throughout the game. So a lot of different boss encounters throughout the game. Well, now I want to ask some really quick questions that should be yes or no, very brief. First, from Castoray, how will you be handling multiplayer? Um, multiplayer, we will basically be allowing anybody to jump in at any time, so. Awesome, from it. MHL Animations, can I pet the gun? Great question. I'm not here to judge what you do with your gun, so you know, you, <laughs> that's a personal question. All right, great. <laughs> Sam Wiseman asks, is Maya's new companion a siren? People are asking the right questions, that's what I will say about that. Oh, you tease. Ah, sorry. All right, from mm. Ironic Sanguine says, is Tiny Tina going to be seen fighting alongside the Vault Hunters? Yes. Nice. All right. Oh, yeah, to think about that. A couple more as fast as I possibly can. Right. Uh, what's the level cap at launch? 50. Will we get to see Flack? Yes. Will we see golden keys and or shift codes for Borderlands 3? Absolutely. Will there be duels? Yes. Other kinds of PvP? Mm, yes and no. Uh. <laughs> And also maybe, and perfect. Maybe, yeah. And will you be able to transfer weapons between your characters? Absolutely, right from the start. Perfect, and when is the damn game coming out? Friday the 13th, 2019, September 13th. Perfect. Borderlands.com for more information. Thanks so much for joining me on stage. Sean, thank you. What you got? I gotta go buy the game, dang it, I don't wanna. <laughs> One of you buy it. <laughs> okay. What? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I yeah. know, but... Uh, yeah, uh, you, you know exactly uh, what. Do I have to? <laughs> I don't care if I get a discount on all my games, dang it. <laughs> What oh. is she doing? Oh, hi, we're, we're live. Sorry. Hello. I was just, uh, yeah, I was actually testing out my outfit for this weekend. I don't know. What do you think, John? I, I think you look really sharp, as always. Very sharp. Well, thank you so much. John Gibson, president of Tripwire. Thank Some you for joining us. Some could say she looks yeah, shark. Yeah, very very busy here. man. Yes. Yes. Now, last year, we revealed Man Eater to the world. And can you remind right. us <laughs> what the game's all about? Absolutely. Maneater is an open world action RPG or shark PG as we call it. You start as a, a small I wish you would. shark pup. <laughs> Please, I wish you would. Survive in this harsh world and try to eat your way to the top of the ecosystem. The three so, words that we think like, the best. You start as a baby. The other one. And uh, the, we also have someone we'd like you to meet. The primate well, one, except in water. Look at the new trailer. That's yeah, what we're and going you know, for. it's a shark. Well, I mean. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're a shark. I don't know what you're trying to say. I mean, the other one, you're just a primate, so you're focused on the Well, no, you're aspect, a group of primates. Now, this one makes it seem like you're only one shark. Uh, so is it a pet shark? Huh? Or did he just not realize that those sharks are there? Oh, God. Oh, wait! Hello, everyone. I'm going to end my life with you. <laughs> I'm so confused, like... You're playing as the shark. Yeah, but this guy just... <laughs> He's got his headphones in. You come any closer with that camera, we two gonna toss it. Jesus. It's mine. <laughs> You're both mine. <laughs> Yomp. <laughs> Who was that appallingly dressed fisherman in the trailer? Because quite frankly, not even I would eat him. <laughs> that was Scaly Pete. And Scaly Pete's the villain in this tale. Scaly uh, Pete is, uh, is a best fisherman in the Gulf, best shark fisherman, or he'll tell you he's the best shark fisherman. And uh, he disfigures our baby shark at the beginning of the game and does some really nasty things. So he's not a very nice guy. And now the story of Maneater is told uh, through the lens of a reality show called Shark Hunters vs. Maneaters. And it follows Pete and uh, the player shark right. on its adventures. And, uh, I'm distracted. You know, it's, it's a really, you see that? You know, it's, it's, it's a very exciting In the corner? Way, uh, yeah. way to tell a story. I mean, it's hard to ignore. Based on that? 
trailer. To be honest, John, it looks like your main goal as a shark is to just bite everything. Yeah, there is there is an awful lot of man eating going on in this game. That is the name of the game, and uh, but we'd like to think of the game as a shark tastic fun action game. It's like GTA if you were a shark. Um, but there's stop <laughs> giving wrong impressions of sharks. Dang it! There is more to the game than just eating. So uh, we they don't like eating get people. Get the water, it's not their fault. And, Jesus! And <laughs> to oh my God! Snack. He just um, so, uh, this, this is going to be what Jaws a, a was to great whites. That you can do in the game. And you mentioned before Gosh, the shark PG. How does that progression system work? So there's three facets to it is still too nice. shark PG. It does. It looks very nice. There's growth. There's life phases and there's evolutions. So front growth, foot. Uh, comes about through eating things, nutrients, people, whatever you can find. And that's kind of like your XP in the game. Wow. Just, uh, you bit yeah, and you and see that? Him away. <laughs> and then at key phases uh, that we call life phases, you'll, you'll, you'll make a big jump. So let's say you're a, a brooding teenage shark and you're about to become an adult. When you become an adult, you take a big leap in size, a big leap in gr uh, uh, power and capability. And then as you reach these life phases, you unlock evolutions that can be applied to parts of the shark's body. For example, you could get metallic teeth that allow you to and tread boats. Or metallic a powerful teeth. tail that allows you to jump to incredible heights. Or you could get mutated lungs that allow you to spend a little more time on the beach getting those afternoon snacks. Oh Just really gosh. quickly, John, everyone's wanting to know so this. The crazy thing is, is, like, didn't he say this was uh, so really told from the perspective of a reality uh, TV show, right? The most it's a reality TV, TV show in the... Ever. Um, well, yeah, yeah, in the game, but yeah, like they're that means these the people are watching game. this shark well, and this yeah. shark hunter, and they're just letting these the other civilians the just get destroyed. Like, you guys look tasty. okay, so, reality TV really show is basically that, anyways. <laughs> we watch people's lives get destroyed every single day, and no one seems to care. We just laugh because we're scared. Look, <laughs> death is one like totally different scale there. Like is you're just. So? At least when you're dead, the shame ends. If we could stop stream right now. <laughs> <laughs> Just tell me I'm wrong. Go ahead, tell me I'm wrong. I no, mean, am I though? No, you're all not right, wrong. Then that's all I we mean, have to say. <laughs> there's no more shame past death. No. Yeah. But still. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome you to know, reality one of the TV show. The best parts about being sponsored by Iwin for the PC gaming show is that I get to sit for this next segment and talk to you about Terraria. Terraria is oh, one of the best-selling PC games of all time, selling almost 30 million copies. And part Seems of a lot lower than Minecraft. Popularity <laughs> is the fact that the developers Relogic continue to add content. They sure do, though. Now, I wish they'd add the content of making it released on my Switch. Let's take a look <laughs> at their penultimate expansion coming up, Terraria Journey's End. Oh. Guess this I got was mentioned earlier, right? We no, I don't think we so. We saw a little bit of this earlier, didn't we? Probably saw a little bit, but I didn't mention Terraria. So the game I now remember is called Starbound. It was made by the uh, Chucklefish people. Mm -hmm. And it's basically like Terraria, but like planets instead of just one world. Gotcha. To the point where it's almost the same exact like style of game. Because I think they both used to be the same team. They just split. Huh. What is that? Golf. Oh. Yeah. So it's 2D Minecraft. With yeah. a little bit more. Well, a lot more. It's not really my cup of tea, but... Hmm. Neither is that. Oh, I didn't appreciate that. Not at all, but hey, it happens. The next title that we're going to be looking at is a game that is the spiritual successor to her story. It's called Telling Lies by Annapurna Interactive, and joining me to talk about it is game director Sam Barlow and actor-producer Logan Marshall Green. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you. Glad to be here. Yeah. The casualness. I now, if, if you haven't played her story, <laughs> you totally should. It's fantastic. I want Someone's to streaming in the crowd? Yeah, I Here's heard that. Here's a game yeah. where you watch live interactive video in order to uncover what happened with a murder. What, what is it that's going on in Telling Lies? What's the premise? So, uh, like her story, Telling Lies is a game in which you watch video footage to piece together a story. And this time, we have a woman who has stolen an NSA hard drive. 
which contains secretly recorded what in the world? <laughs> and private conversations between our four characters. Something has gone terribly wrong, and it's up to you to figure out what and why. It's time to take a look at some of the gameplay mechanics and see telling lies in action. Take a look. That's a lot of information there. Oh, hmm. Sam, I got so you have to solve a murder about what we've just based seen. off Let all the tapes. The mechanics. I mean, I saw, you know, the subtitles hmm. highlighting and loading more video footage. What's going on? So what we do in Telling Lies is we take all of the exploration you have in a normal video game, so without walking around in a 3D world, yeah. and we apply that directly to the story, to the footage itself. So you're going to be scrubbing around in these clips, Paying close attention, and you're going to be picking up the subtext as it's made, to the places. And with that information, you're going to use that to find the moments, dig into those, and over time, kind of build up this picture of the story. And it's, it's truly like an open world game. A lot of times, open world video games, they talk about the square kilometer inch, four miles in the um, What's the sort of scope that we're talking about? Like, how many hours of footage is there? So we got like, over 10 hours of footage here, so wow. it really it's a story that encompasses like two years. What I wanted to do with this one was to like, really embrace this idea of mm. open world game. You're free to explore and follow your curiosity. Just lose yourself in the story. That's cool. I don't think I'll buy it. But it's cool. It's a no. cool idea. But like live action games aren't always for me. Like to actually yeah. Try to have all the layers in there for each performance, also not knowing when a player is going to be seeing the specific footage of the performance. Well, it's definitely a non-linear open world game, but our approach and Sam's approach was um, not unlike a movie or a TV show. We had to understand it A to B. So for the most part, that's how we shot it. Obviously, we shoot a movie or a TV show. Um, and in this case, the game, you're going to be shooting out of, out of order. But we actually stay pretty linear in how we approach the story. After it, like uh, all the other times we were actors, we just went after intention yeah, yeah. and then what do we want? And and, um, and we tried to make it as deep. Um, you know, it's got a lot of scope. Yeah. Um, but we wanted to make it as deep as possible. And Sam is one of the best uh, movie or TV directors I've worked with, so it was uh, very similar. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Really good to see. Now, of course, I do want to stress to any of you if you have not played her story. It's quick to play through. It's absolutely brilliant. Please check it out in the meantime. Have you? Nope. Played. Never. We're of course waiting to okay. find out. When can we play? Very soon. Very soon. So we'll have a date soon. Right now, you can go to Steam. You can wish list on Steam. We all love Steam. Um, you don't know that. Very soon. We, we do. do. A little bit more during E3. And, uh, the game will be <laughs> nice. Very soon. <laughs> as soon as humanly possible. Yeah. Well, Sam Logan, thanks so much for joining me on stage. Once again, telling lies. I love how he's the first person to really mention Steam. Yeah. Now up on the balcony. I imagine Frank Epic's really upset now. How dare you? Year after year after year. <laughs> how dare you? This is our time. How much they've improved it, Frankie? What's going on with Warframe? Well. Yeah. My favorite part of last year's show, aside from being upstage by a giant duck, was getting a glimpse at the future of Warframe. 
And here with the latest look at the next expansion to the universe is Space Mom Rebecca Ford. So yeah, Space Mom! Save yourself, please, because Mother's Space here. Mom. Now, Rebecca, what are we about to say? Uh, we're going to take a look at an amazing trailer that our team has put together. Uh, a lot of, of our um, players have been waiting a year for Warframe and also one of the voices for, so for one of the main characters. Oh, okay. See what we've been doing. Yeah, let's take a look. How far have you made into Warframe? I don't want to talk about it. Okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> Enough to soul out. Necros That's cool. Prime. That's Rebecca, cool. It must be so exciting to know that the fans have finally seen it, and you're clearly going all in on the epic space combat. So tell me about the new stuff that players are going to be able to experience. I wasn't so wait, wait, did that say you can get Necros Prime free if you yes, tune in? If you tune in. Jack, it's basically taking the space one? ninja part of Warframe, yeah, sending it back up to space, Probably, bringing players yeah. that squad gameplay they know, taking the enemies like the Corpus and the Grenier, giving them their own Railjack to you know, essentially explore the solar system with and take down the bad guys. And when are fans going to get to see more? Well, uh, TennoCon is in London, Ontario. It's July 6th, and you can come uh, watch it online on Twitch. We're going to be showing a lot more in our keynote for uh, what Empyrean is going to be. Well, today I'm getting a feel for the suit, so uh, what's the deal with that sweet looking necklace prime? How do I get my Tenno arms into it? I cannot say that on live television, but uh, you know, there, there are ways. But yeah, you just have to watch, link your Warframe account to your Twitch account. If you watch yep, 30 minutes of our Tenno live show, you can get there it. There you go. Hopefully you stay for the whole hour, because we got lots of shows. Well, I'll stay for the whole hour. And good luck with TennoCon. So, so, thank you. <sighs> Okay, you have now to we've link some amazing your Twitch games. account to your Warframe account. Strange is our next game. Developed by Brooklyn based studio Feral Cat Den. It's an existential by using the same Odyssey. They'll show you how to the on there. Yeah, it's oh. actually blowing my mind learning about this one. It's not like I'm trying to get Necros Prime. But it's free. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but like, it's what are you free. About? Yes, you are trying to get it. Cause it's <laughs> but it's free. So, <laughs> you know, I'm going to go for that. Maybe. And when they say July 6th, when they, that's, or is it 16th? I don't even remember. I've already forgotten. I'm interested, but I already forgot because I looked at this and I was like, what is this nonsense? I have questions. Looks like a detective game. Yeah, but I have questions. <laughs> <laughs> Genesis. That hairstyle. Dang. So you're solving a murder. Is this that Big Bang game they were talking about? Cosmic Adventure. Genesis Sounds... Noir, just beautiful, stylish art. The next game we're going to take a look at is the twist on the stealth. Genre. Where are the people to talk about that one? Eho, where you play as a six-year-old trying to escape a monastery and find your mother, mother using money. toys, money, and to avoid monks. Let's take a look what? at this gorgeous spaghetti western-inspired project. When they say it's escape studio. monks. That's what it sounds like. So we're a spaghetti western. Uh. Sup? So, <laughs> uh.
I'm pretty sure your mom left you there for a reason. That man is doing the most... Oh! Like you were gonna get caught, my guy. Haha! Jeez. This child is gonna die outside, you know that, right? He's like armed with a slingshot and nothing else. <laughs> where, where is he going? That man is... He's determined, but where are you going? <laughs> <laughs> El Hijo. El Hijo, once again, is El the title Hijo. of the trailer hmm. we just saw. For our final guest tonight, please join me in welcoming from Larian Studios, CEO <gasps> Sven Vinke, and so Baldur's Gate, from, yeah. Uh, Dungeons and Dragons. At Wizard Larian Coast Studios did not Dungeons make the first Baldur's Gate Mike or the second. Talk about huh. Baldur's Gate. That was Bioware and such. I love Bioware. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. <laughs> Where's Bioware now? This was now? Only they made Anthem. Recently announced. How did this partnership oh. come about? <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, these people make um, Divinity yeah. Original Sin and Divinity Two and such. And I tried okay. To convince them back then cool. That Good games. The Which? Uh, and uh, so we had a long chat about. Yeah. Uh, They're also what super what big fans of the game. Okay. And then uh, we kept on bumping into each other, and then uh, suddenly in uh, 2016, I get a phone call from Nathan Stewart, who's the big boss of Mike and the head of Dungeons and Dragons. He said, yeah. "You need to come to Seattle right away. Huh. Uh, we're going to have dinner in a very shady restaurant." And he had this big stack of paper <laughs> with him. And on it was Baldur's Gate 3. And in it was pretty much everything that we talked about. And he says, I'm going to wow. present this to my board. Do you still want to do it? Sure. I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, what are you talking about? You have to come here. Just go do it. <laughs> Just do it. Here we are. I mean, what does the Baldur's Gate franchise mean to you, Mike? Oh, to me, it's the crown jewel of D&D &D, uh, computer games, right? I mean, for me personally, Baldur's Gate, the original one, was the finally I had the chance to actually play a D&D campaign rather yeah. than having to run them for all my friends. So it just it means so much to us. Baldur's Gate, it's you know such fantastic storytelling, and it's so exciting to see it come to a, not only a new generation of gamers, yeah. but for the gamers who remember the 20 years it's been since the right. original, the first two in the series. So it's incredibly exciting. And for us, it really is it's such an important part of the yeah. D&D mythos as a whole. And we, we got a chance to see the trailer. Talk to me about some of the story elements, the world elements. What are things we're going to see in Baldur's Gate 3? Cthulhuism. Well, we're only talking about what's in the trailer right now. But, uh, Did you see the trailer? You, the city, mm -hmm. you start with the city. Uh, you start outside of the city, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, there's going to be mind flayers. Uh, they're very nasty. Uh, you are seeing in the trailer the process of seromorphosis, as we mm -hmm. yeah. call it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's accelerated, so that's not normal. Yeah. And you're going to see a lot of iconic creatures, iconic characters, iconic places. Oh, you are dying. I'm, I'm yeah, he's not having a good time. The Did his teeth fall out too? Listen, why would I need teeth? To Dungeons and Dragons, tons of broadcasts on Twitch. Um, oh yeah, you are how dying, How do you translate friend. some of the insane things that players want to do mm -hmm. into... You know, yeah, what? it's happening! <laughs> so we started with Player Handbook, which is basic, basic rule set of Dungeons uh, and Dragons. Which Very accelerated. Uh, fifth edition, fifth edition. Right. Yeah. And so we poured it uh, as much as we oh. could to the video game. We looked at what works really well. We looked at the things that didn't work that well because it is a video game and this yeah. was made for uh, uh, tabletop gaming. Yeah. And, <laughs> uh, so we started modifying those things and then we had to add things on top of it because yeah. uh, if you play tabletop, you have a game master and you say, well, I want to do this. Yeah. And then the game I want to start a fight with a pigeon. And he's like, okay, roll yeah, for sure. dexterity. Exactly, that's yeah. it. That is so not what I would roll for to make on a pigeon, but whatever, forget but you. We've, been, we've gone very, very far. Yeah, I mean, can you give an example of like a crazy moment that a player might do that you could actually play out in the game? Uh, well, I could, let's say that we get into a fight because you ask a nasty question, I don't want to answer it. <laughs> and uh, I take the chair over there, I put it on fire, smash it on your head. Uh, well, just as an example. It's just an example, it's <laughs> fine, we're just talking, we're just uh, talking. These are things that we have to put systems into the game for to, to do it, which are not necessarily going to be described inside of the book. Interesting. And, and I mean, like, Mike, in terms of your role, Speaking to Larry, best Studios, RPG in the last data, 10 years. All the sorts of things that players do. What's the sort of information that you provide in assistance? Well, really, what it comes down to is providing the story. I mean, if we're only going to do PC games, then I mean, I can't really do anything about uh, that. It's like a, a toy box, 
for Dungeon right. Master. Witcher 3 is pretty good. And build Dragon Age 2 better not get anything. Who voted for Dragon Age 2? <laughs> get yourself out of here. Oh, God. I can see people going for Witcher 3. I heard a lot about Witcher 3, so I'm not... I'm not gonna say I'm surprised, the, honestly. System support. Skyrim will always what, be people's favorite. In, in Seeing Divinity get some good is good. Character, for each character race, each character class, so that if you know if, if you have your favorite class and it's in the game, you really feel like you're taking on that role that you love so much from the tabletop, yeah. really coming to life in an authentic way in Baldur's Gate 3. And we're gonna talk in a moment about you know Baldur's Gate 3 release dates and whatnot. But we have a second game that we want to talk about and on a new technology known as pencil and paper. I understand that there is oh, this a one? tabletop prequel coming for Baldur's Gate. Exactly. So in Baldur's Gate, we think there's one saga. All the different games coming together to yeah. tell one grand story of the city. So uh, on September 17th, we're releasing our next tabletop campaign, uh, Baldur's Gate Descent into Avernus. And it is the next chapter in the Baldur's Gate saga. Right. And it's a prequel to Baldur's Gate 3. So if you haven't played a Baldur's Gate game since Baldur's Gate 1 or 2, this is your chance to check out on the history. It's been about 100 years since the events of Baldur's Gate 2. Yeah. So this will give you a chance to check in on the city, to see what's going on, its current state, who the movers and shakers are. And we also feature a complete levels 1 to 13 campaign that takes you from the mean streets wow. of Baldur's Gate to the depths of hell itself. And sort of pose to the players yeah. a question, do you, do you want to redeem Baldur's Gate or send it to damnation? So we're putting that right in players' hands. Well, I have to ask Stan, it's a question on a lot of people's minds. What can you talk to I'm us about? I'm sending everything to hell. What do you mean? What in the world? This ain't Doom. Played for a long time. Yeah. Uh, gonna have to wait a little bit more. Uh, <laughs> uh, so uh, we don't. We. This is the game that we want to play. So we want to make sure it's really, yeah. really good. And then. Please do. That's the case. Then. <laughs> Please do. Please. Well, you don't get another chance. A long time. And I think I speak for a lot of people here when I say, take your time. If the Divinity Thank Original you. Sin games are any indication of the quality. It's going to be fantastic and worth the wait. Gentlemen, thanks so much for joining me Thank on stage. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ben and Mike talking about Baldur's Gate 3. Goodbye. Goodbye, guys. Why are they leaving? Well, it's because the PC gaming show has officially concluded. Let's bring up on the stage the fantastic Frankie Ward. Come here, Frankie. Hello. Well, well, well. Thank you so much, Sean. Hasn't this audience been absolutely fantastic today? Guys. Thank you so much for coming out to the fifth annual PC Gaming Show. We want to give an enormous thanks to all of you who tuned in live. We want to, of course, thank all of you who personally showed up this morning. And of course, the sponsors who helped make this possible. Epic Game Store, iWin, Frontier, Funcom, Paradox, Interactive, Hovercast, Perfect World Rebellion, Tripwire, and Samsung. As you know, PC Gaming is a platform. It's not a publisher or developer. So these sponsors are essential for letting us put on this show every year. Thank you so much. And I gotta ask, Frank, any titles you're excited about? Well, I do love a baby elephant, so definitely Planet Zero, and slightly more awkwardly, then I also wanna eat things, maybe elephants oh, included, yeah. so Maneater, of course. I'm personally looking forward to Songs of Conquest, and as you heard, there's games coming out all across 2019 and into 2020. We hope you all have a fantastic E3. It officially begins tomorrow. Big shout out to all the other yep. press conferences. Hello so again, drop coming out to tomorrow. See you two years Nintendo. in a row. We hope you all have a fantastic today. time at E3 and go play some games. Mm -hmm. We still have friends. today. See you next year. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye -bye. We got Ubisoft. I thought we weren't doing this. No, we always do Ubisoft. You always do Ubisoft. You do Ubisoft, and I think that's not all of them. <laughs>
so. <laughs> they they got me real hard on that one. I was like, yay. <laughs> now, as far as the um, the show of the new uh, console, or not console, but the new PC for Samsung. It wasn't a PC. It wasn't? It was a monitor. Oh, a monitor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. The yeah. new monitor. Mm-hmm. What do you think? Now, I don't I know you, said, you mentioned you don't particularly care for curve. I don't care but for curve. Like as far as the Gen Sync, G Sync, I enjoy G Sync. It's fantastic. So, but now, I, have we seen G Sync in consoles or no? Because okay, so that's video only thing. A, the only console that could have G Sync would be the Switch. And why is that? Because PlayStation Four and Xbox use AMD. And what is that? That's a different. G Sync is for N- Nvidia. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I forgot to mention that. So, my Switch is powered by NVIDIA. Ah! Cancel! I can't. It's happening. It's, it's happening right now. It's... Uh, oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> you can be paused. All right. I guess, yeah, we'll be back later. Basically, because... Nah. Nah.